1980, American melodic hard rockers 707 released their first of three albums on the Casablanca label, and from it, the track, I Could Be Good For You. <laughs> Like a careful, very precise sound. We got that riff that's kind of like crunchy, yet it's also really controlled. And, uh, you know, it's accented by that piano. Um, uh, very evocative of, of uh, the, the kind of slick trends of uh, hard rock, particularly stateside at the time. Um, other bands in the vein, uh, Russia, uh, Trillion, yeah, those come to mind. Or the Canadian, some Canadian bands like Mannequin, yeah. Do you believe that you're on your own? Searching in vain for a close friend. Love isn't blind, and you're not alone. Uh, that riffing sounds kind of like palmatic, you know, like, uh, those heartbreaking days may have reached an end. I could be good for you. My, my. I could be good for you. My, my. All right, vocalists got that restraint about him, got that kind of just masculine assurance, you know, that can, uh, where it, it can kind of uh, like open out on certain choice syllables and then like uh, sound laid back, laid back in other lines. And uh, we got those, that strum going. Yeah, yeah, I, I like the contrast between like palm matted riffing on the um, verses, which is something that was used a lot in New Wave as well. And then the more like the open strum during the chorus. So you starstruck. Uh, nuance that I noticed in a lot of the records around this time where they were getting much more careful with harmonies to the point it's like the the, fr the first verse you wouldn't hear any the second verse you would start to hear like a, a second vocalist double up on certain lines on to like accent choice words or something you need a change of luck Like vibraphone. Consider your face. Think about your age. There's no time to wait for your luck to change. The producer, um, I guess might uh, be somewhat responsible for this, but there's a lot of attention to musical detail, like um, little in instrumental colors that I've pointed out and also the way the um, the, the guitar will sometimes just ins break away from the chord and like emphasize a certain note like dun 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 um, the producer is Norman Ratner who goes back to the 60s he uh, produced records by the leaves yeah yeah too many people so the regents so uh, started out in like oh he produced those the hook yeah, late '60s psych band. I think that had, um, I think had uh, Lee Sklar, Leland Sklar, and an Orange Colored Sky. Well, this guy has quite a s American psychedelic pedigree. The Yellow Pages. Hmm. I could be good for you. Okay, I like how that riff was altering like da na 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 like like an A minor da and then it goes na na yeah they throw in a B over the A so it's da na and then they uh like a suspended second yeah it's like the root note r raises a step and like over 
underneath the A minor. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> G right there. Dun, 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 like. That's a, 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 another uh, method in composition that I hear from around this time where you'll, you'll um, hang on to like the same chord um, for like um, four bars, but after, um, but on the third bar, you'll alter one of the notes, like like the root note, like half a step. Like that's used on "I Got You." It's like dun 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 dun. Like all, all in D minor, just the the bass note kind of moving up. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin Russell and um, yeah played on the uh, three 707 albums from from back in the day they the, the band did uh, the nameplate was resurrected in the 2000s and uh, not a lot of credits unfortunately yeah pretty good player there <laughs> There's like a, a method that we, like like Toto would use a lot, you know, like uh, like uh, controlled riffing, you know, maybe dropping out for like a bar or two while the piano kind of plays the sort of staccato, like uh, <clears throat> run of the same note or something. And uh, actually, what I should say about the guitarist is that he didn't really do much uh, during around this time. It's like after after seven oh seven. His next credits were all from like the nineties and two thousands, like like later period Rick Derringer, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> Touch right there, a little, little bit of a psychedelic touch. That 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 vibraphone again, and some like studio trickery there. Yeah, lead vocals by Phil Bryant, who um, doesn't appear to have any credits outside these three, um, the the first three original uh, seven oh seven albums. Yeah, the first two on Casablanca, and then the third on Boardwalk Entertainment Company. Yeah, Casablanca barely made it into the nineteen eighties. Um, uh, a label very much associated with the disco era. In fact, their producer, uh, Norman Ratner, despite um, his garage rock uh, origins in the 60s, by the early 80s, he, let's see, in, in, the, in the early 70s, he produced albums for Gene Page, Lou Rawls, interesting. He produced a uh, Rawls cover of Hall & Oates' of She's Gone. And um, at some point, he kind of uh, came into the Casablanca fold, and it looks like he uh, produced some disco albums around this time, too, by one, um, oh, A. Blaine, yeah. I want you to know
I like the uh, kind of the, the calm uh, yet uh, assert aggression that he's putting. Yeah, a, a balance between calm and aggression that he's putting into not, not just the words, but also those um, when he like emotes those vowels. And... I could be second that riff almost reminds you of something by Judas Priest that came out the following year da, da, da. just maybe maybe like 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 the like one or two notes of it anyway um I say that because the the guitar sound and tone is similar <laughs> was 707 with I Could Be Good For You from their uh, 1980 Casablanca release, 707, yeah, and quite a few good songs on there, uh, including uh, some like really heavy power ballads, but since they're really long, I'm just, I'll save that for another uh, segment uh, later on, but down the year, but this, how about let's hear Waste of Time. <laughs> out the uh the the kind of open spaces of this quite well like this this we basically have kind of like a downbeat bass and piano and yet it's it's got that heavy lurch to it that and, and, and it's very like producer driven too <laughs> Uh, th this track would have been arranged this way live before they got signed. This, um, it, it, it's, it's kind of interesting how creative hard rock could get when you um, pair a band with a producer that has all these ideas about sonic separation and, no, uh, we're going to mute this for like eight bars and then, you know, we're going to like emphasize, we're going to put a bunch of echo on over, you know, here like on the drums or on or on the piano or something and um it, it doesn't seem like like the, the the kind of arrangements that any band of, of this silk would be would have been doing say when they were still playing the bars <laughs> that the singer would have had the pipes to be doing uh, like all that blues rock but I get the feeling that he at least heard some of those vocal lists and kind of uh, picked up on some of the the mannerisms like like that that just that mixture of like aggression and restraint <laughs> And of course, I was thinking of like people like Paul Rogers or um, <clears throat> Frankie Miller or the guy in Gamma. <laughs> I 
epic in uh, like midsection that completely breaks away from the song proper. Yeah, goes. <laughs> this um how have they made this into an epic more so than you would have imagined like it it kind of uh was hinting at sort of a, a martial uh <clears throat> approach like that's where it kind of like what where i was thinking it might like break into you know um like with that drumming you know that snare drumming and, and all but i i'm you know i'm starting to think this is kind of like more like this band is like a, like a more hard rocking um ambrosia you know circa 180 yeah Praise I was giving the guitarist in that last song, I feel is vindicated more and more as this plays. <laughs> back into the song proper. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. does have kind of like a martial feel and well a, a few bars back anyway here. Or just kind of like a statement of independence, you know, like, um, hey, I haven't got time for any games, I haven't got time for any BS, you know, if, uh, you know. You know, if, if you don't appreciate uh, the time you get to spend with me, then move out of the way because there are a lot of other women who would be just, you know, honored to take your place. Yeah, uh, that was uh, 707 with Waste of Time, and before that, I Could Be Good For You from their 1980 release, 707. And they are a four-man band on here uh, and uh, enhanced sonically by their talented producer. On their third album, no, on their second album, they seem to be reduced to a trio. Um, and let's see, of the three 80s albums, I, the first and the third, Mega Force, are really good. Uh, the second album, uh, ingeniously titled The Second Album, which uh, has kind of an iffy cover, and uh, I don't know. I was about as impressed with 
Uh, kind of a sophomore jinx. <laughs> Basically, uh, I endorsed the first album and the thir third third al the first album self titled and the third Mega Force. Yeah. For more rubies and sapphires from the catalog of 707, see the directory of albums by American maximalist rock artists linked in the description below. Like and subscribe, follow me on social media, share the video, and leave a comment if there are any observations you have about the two tracks we just heard. The interplay, the intensity, the uh, control, the sonic, you know, just detail, and, and uh, the overall swagger and the... Uh, compositional creativity there, particularly the second track, yeah. And until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most ear-traveled tri-maximalist, signing off.